Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we're going to continue our time series series and talk about how to calculate seasonal indices. This video is aimed at students in Year 12 in Queensland and Western Australia and also in Year 11 in Tasmania depending on the maths strand that you're doing. In this particular video we're firstly going to talk about what a seasonal index is, then we're going to learn how to calculate the seasonal indexes and then I'm going to take you through some worked examples. Then we're going to talk about, at the end, what's coming up in our next video series. So firstly, what's a seasonal index? Well, it's a number that indicates how one season compares to an average season. And a seasonal index can be calculated as a decimal or as a percentage. Now, if the index or the percentage is greater than 1 or 100, it tells us that a season's values are usually higher than the average for the whole year. So for example, if my index for winter was 1.3, that would tell me that sales are 30% higher because 1 is 100% and then 0.3 is 30% more, higher than the average for the whole year. So that could be something like sales of jumpers or pullovers or hoodies or something like that. We expect them to be a lot higher in winter than in the summertime. And for example, if our index is lower than 1 or 100%, it tells us the season's values are lower than the yearly average. So if I had an index for spring of 0.8, that means that the sales in spring were 20% lower than my yearly average. And I got 20% because 1 take away 0.8 is 20%. Now all our four seasonal indices, spring, summer, autumn and winter, will all add to the number 4 because their average is going to be 1 or 100%. So we're basically measuring this baseline of 100% and all of our seasons are above or below that 100% and they will all average out to the 100%. We're comparing each of those seasons to that baseline of 100. Our seasonal indices are used to smooth our data and it removes the impacts of seasons from our data so that we can see an overall trend. So for example, when I was talking a moment ago about sales of jumpers, if you're living in Queensland like me, you would know that jumpers don't sell very well for most of the year. And so you would see a, quite a big spike in the winter time and then it would be declining for the rest of the year. But you'd be wanting to be able to compare year on year to know are jumper sales in a store as a trend actually increasing over time and that's where we use our seasonal indices to smooth our data. So let's talk about how to calculate those seasonal indices. Step one, we're going to calculate our average for the whole year. Step two, we're going to divide every value that year by that yearly average. And step three, we then calculate an average per season using a number of years of data, taking our answers from step two. So these are going to be the same three steps any time you calculate seasonal indices. You may want to pause now and take some notes. So let's look at our first work, worked example. This is ice cream sales for shop X and we're going to calculate some seasonal indices. Now to calculate seasonal indices you need at least a year of data. Ideally a few years of data would be very helpful to get some good um, information to make some predictions about your trends. So here we've got three years of data and we've got four seasons. Now in these videos, I'm going to be using our common seasons of spring, summer, autumn and winter. However, you may have a situation where you've got months of the year or days of the week where different seasonality trends are happening. For example, we talked about in my very first video in this time series, series about how sometimes you can have seasonality within a week. For example, on Saturday night at a nightclub, that'll be their highest night for selling alcohol and then the other nights of the week may not be so high. Maybe Friday night's a little less, Sunday a little less again, and then perhaps very little sales Monday to Thursday. So then you have seasonality occurring within a week. So just do be aware that seasons aren't always aligned to seasons of the year. It could be aligned to other trends within a shorter time frame. Okay, so let's work out following those three steps I talked about earlier, how to calculate these seasonal indices. So step one is we calculate the average for every year. So we've got three years here, so we're gonna calculate three averages. So firstly, we're gonna start with 2018. If you would recall from grade seven, probably, that when we calculate the average, it's the same as the mean, we're gonna add the numbers up and divide it by how many there are, in this case, there's four. So we're gonna give a sample calculation. Now, if you're doing an exam, you don't necessarily need to show every single calculation for 
calculating the seasonal indices because it's quite an involved process. So I would recommend showing a sample calculation for each step of the way. Now, talk to your teacher on that one because your teacher may have higher expectations. It'll also depend in an exam on how much room you're given and how many marks are allocated to this particular question as well. But some working would be required. So firstly, we're going to start with a formula. The mean is equal to the sum of all the values divided by how many there are. Then we're going to substitute that in and come up with an answer, taking a few short steps. So we can see that our mean for this year is 184.25. We're going to need to insert a row there and put those averages along the bottom. And we're going to repeat that process for 2019 and 2020. So then we've got our three averages. My next step is to take every value in one year and divide it by the yearly average for that year. So we're looking here and creating new columns, one for each year, because we're going to take that original data and divide it by its yearly average. So if I take here with my sample calculation, I've got 185 and I'm going to divide that by 184.25 and then I've got my answer will go into 2018. And I need to repeat that now for every one of those values. This is the tedious part. So now I've got all of those informations there. They look a little bit like indices. OK, so you'll notice that they sort of hover around that one mark. So you've got some that are a little bit above, some that are a little bit below, but nothing sort of is a negative number. You wouldn't be expecting a negative number because you don't have any negative sales. So if you've got a negative number, that's a problem. And you wouldn't expect anything vastly different between that range of zero to about 1.9, for example. Now we're going to calculate the average per season. This is how we calculate our seasonal indices. So we're going to take one season at a time. Let's look at spring, for example. We've now got these three numbers, one for each year, and we take the average of those. So once again, with a sample calculation, I'm going to find the mean of those three, and I come to an answer of 0.963. And that is my seasonal index for spring. And I do the same process for the rest. Now, there's a good way to remember it. Firstly, if you've got your years in columns, you're going to work down first and then across. And so you can take an average first, then divide, and then an average again. And if you had to go backwards with a seasonal index, you would remember that you're only really dividing when you're working out how to find your seasonal indices. So to work backwards, you'd be multiplying. Lastly, we're going to check our work. And this is always a good idea to do this. We need to make sure that the average of our indices, when we add those four numbers up um, come and divide it by four, it comes to the number one. So let's do that. Let's firstly do a little sample calculation. And I would recommend here that you write check calculation, something with the word check. So it indicates to your teacher that you're actually checking your work and not adding further steps to the question. So we're going to add those four seasonal indices together and we get 4.319. If I now take the average of those by dividing by four, it's 1.08. It's not out a whole lot. It could be explained by a bit of rounding, particularly because we've done a lot of averages and we've taken averages of averages and we've divided in between. There will be a little bit of room for error there, but it wouldn't help to just do a quick check of your calculations just to make sure that you've rounded everything correctly in between and also that you haven't made any transposing mistakes where you've got two numbers swapped with one another. I would say if your average is out by more than maybe 1.05, it's a good idea to go back and check. However, I did do this on a spreadsheet and I know that it was correct. So um, no panic there. It's just simply based on rounding. Let's look at work example number two now. We're now given four seasonal indices and we've got one missing. We need to find the seasonal index for summer. So remember that our four indices should add to four. So let's add those up and with the calculation. We're going to call that summer season X and we're going to add all of the indices together and see where we go with that. So if we add those three up that we do know, we end up with 3.72 plus X equals four, subtract 3.72 from both sides, and we find that the seasonal index for summer is 0.26. Excellent idea to write a statement for that one as well, because you all should, always should write a statement at the end of your questions. Now, coming up next on our video series, we're gonna be doing some de-seasonalizing of our data and some complex questions from past exams. And the best way to find out when those new videos are coming up is to hit that notifications button and subscribe to the channel so you know when these are going to be ready for you. Now, if you don't like having messages coming up on your phone all the time from YouTube, 
why not subscribe to us on Facebook? Um, look up McClutchy Maths there. We have little um, jokes of the week and some interesting information and tidbits along the way, uh, study tips for exams, etc. And you'll know when the next video is ready for you to watch. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us.